Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a quartic equation. We have z to the fourth power equals 16 times z minus 1 to the fourth power and we're going to be solving for z values. I'll be presenting four methods even though the fourth one will probably be incomplete. I'll just give you an idea, okay? Let's start with the first one. So for my first method, obviously, no pain, no gain method, I'm going to expand everything. But I'll spare you the, all the trouble. And when I do, I get something like this. And let me go ahead and arrange this because you can expand it. Sometimes people say, oh, we want to see the steps. So, okay, fine, that I'll do it. c to the fourth minus 4z cubed plus 6z squared by using the binomial theorem. I can go ahead and expand z minus 1 to the fourth power. And this is what I get. And then after distributing the 16z to the fourth and then subtracting z to the fourth, I can put everything on the same side. Allow me to skip one step here. And we get the following quartic equation. Okay. I can't even write a 2 there. And then we'll get minus 64z plus 16 equals 0. Okay, that's my quartic, and good luck solving it, right? Obviously, there's a quartic formula. I don't know if I share with you the link, but if you look it up on Wikipedia, you're going to see it. It's huge. It's super duper long, and it's not going to fit anywhere. But uh, we can still use it. There's a much better way, though. And that's called RRT, or rational root theorem. If there are any rational roots, they're going to come from factors of this number, which is the constant, divided by the factors of this number, which is the leading coefficient. In other words, you're going to be looking at all factors of 16 and then kind of combine them with all factors or all possible factors of 15. And hopefully you're going to get something from here. That's going to take forever, but you can use a computer or some type of calculator or Wolfram Alpha. But when you do that, you're going to get the following. Z equals 2 is going to work and Z equals 2 thirds is going to work. And when you factor this using the fact that, okay, z minus 2 must be a factor, and of course 3z minus 2 is going to be another factor, our, our quartic is going to look like this. z minus 2 multiplied by 3z minus 2 times 5z squared minus 8z plus 4 equals 0. Now we'll, we ended up with a quadratic, which is not easily factorable. But if you look at the roots of this quadratic, which is easy to find by the quadratic formula, by the way. So you're going to find z equals 4 plus minus 2i divided by 5. If you use the quadratic formula, that's what you're going to get. And from here, you already know z equals 2 is a solution and z equals 2 thirds is a solution. So we got four solutions, which makes sense for a quartic equation, right? That was the goal, to solve for all z values. Okay, that's the first method. I hope this makes sense. Expand it and find some possible solutions, candidates, and then factor uh, using them. You can use polynomial division, other methods, so on and so forth. Let's take a look at the second method. For the second method, I'm going to go ahead and take the fourth root. Obviously, we can do that because both sides are perfect fourth roots. So when you take the fourth root, take the fourth root, you're going to get two results. Actually, you should get more than that, but let's just say we get two. And let me tell you how we can get the other ones. But if you take the real uh, roots, you're going to get something like z squared equals, I'm sorry, I, we're taking fourth roots. I got distracted. When you take the fourth root of z to the fourth, you're going to get z. And then the fourth root of 16 is 2, and you're going to get z minus 1. That's going to be one of the uh, equations, or you're going to get z equals the opposite of this. Let's go ahead and work with these two equations first, because those are easy to handle. 2z minus 2, and this is going to be negative 2z plus 2. This, the first one, gives us z equals 2, as before. And this one gives us 3z equals 2, which means z equals 2 thirds. So we got two solutions that are real. Where do the complex solutions come from? That's a good question, right? So here's what you can do. z to the fourth power can actually be written as i times z to the fourth power. Or we can do the same thing on the right-hand side. So take a look. Since i to the fourth power is equal to 1, right? 
because i squared is negative 1. We can go ahead and write this as z to the fourth power equals 2 times z minus 1 times i times uh, that, that expression to the fourth power. And when you take the fourth roots, in addition to what we already have, you can go ahead and consider the following. z can be written as 2 times z minus 1 times i, and z can be written as negative that, right? Obviously, when you raise uh, the opposite to the fourth power, you're going to get the same thing. Make sense? And from here, obviously, you can solve for z, right? And you'll get the exact same solutions that we talked about. Make sense? Okay, awesome. So let's go ahead and take a look at the third method. We still have to briefly talk about the fourth, so I want to spare some time for that too. So remember, with the second method, we took the fourth roots, right? So another question that we can raise is, can I take square roots instead of fourth roots? And the answer is, why not, right? So let's go ahead and do that. If you take square roots, you're going to get z squared equals 4 times z minus 1 squared, or z squared equals the opposite of that. You see how the opposites work here? So you're going to get these two solutions. But guess what? These are quadratic equations, and each of them have two solutions that give us all the solutions. That's what's really cool about the third method. I, I don't want to say that's my favorite because you're going to get to decide, but it's a really good method in my opinion. Anyways, so let's go ahead and expand this. This is going to be 4z squared. Remember, we're going to get a minus 2z, so it's going to be minus 8z plus 4. And then let's go ahead and solve this one first. We're going to put 3z squared minus 8z plus 4 equals 0. And from the second one, we're going to get z squared equals, basically the right-hand side is going to be the opposite. Let's go ahead and just negate everything. Take a shortcut, and then we're going to get 5z squared minus 8z plus 4 equals 0. So there's an or in between. We get two quadratic equations. And solving quadratics are super easy because we have a really nice formula, right? But if you go ahead and use the formula or otherwise just factor it with the x method or z method, you get z 3z minus 2 multiplied by z minus 2 equals 0. And from the second equation, it's not factorable. You get the complex non-real solutions and again as before we get the same thing two-thirds and two and these two complex solutions that brings us to the end of the third method and the beginning of the fourth method which we'll briefly talk about and if you know of a four fifth method for this problem please let us know in the comment section down below okay so the fourth method is going to start with a question. My question is, is z equals a plus b going to work? Is this going to work? Probably give it a try and you're going to see the results. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.